In this video, we're going to learn how to automate Notion databases using Python. <clears throat> okay, so these are going to be the steps to automate to-do lists with Python and the Notion API. So I'm doing an example where we're creating a database that's supposed to be our to-do list. And then we're going to automate checking and unchecking tasks, as well as uh, creating new tasks in that database in Notion using Python. To do that, we'll have to do the following steps. First, we're going to set up a new integration in Notion and generate an API key. Then we're going to create a database for the to-do list and get the corresponding ID. Finally, we're going to initialize the variables holding the API keys and the relevant database URLs. Then we're going to write a function to read the database. We're going to write a function to list all the tasks present in that database. We're going to write another one to check and uncheck the tasks in the to-do list. And then we're going to write one to add tasks to the database. And the last step is uh, we're going to wrap everything into a command line tool. So let's go to each of these uh, in detail. So for setting up an integration in Notion, all you need to do is uh, head up to uh, my integration. So notion.so uh, forward slash my integrations. You click on new integration and then you copy the generated API token, which we're going to use inside our Python script. Then we're going to create a database for that to do list and get the corresponding ID. So uh, to create a database in Notion, we just open a page in our Notion workspace and we type in uh, forward slash database. So something like this. So to create a database in Notion, all you need to do is um, you come here in Notion and you write database inline or full page. We're going to choose full page and then we have our database. I'm going to call mine tasks and that's what you got to do now when. OK. So after we've done that we're going to initialize the variables that are holding the API keys and the relevant database URLs. So to do this, we got to first export the corresponding keys to our environment. So we have to avoid stuff like, you know, you putting uh, API keys uh, publicly available on GitHub or, you know, you don't want to have uh, API keys in your code base. So you're going to update your .bashrc file and you're going to write two lines which are going to be export Notion token as, and then you give your Notion integration key that you got when you went to the My Integrations part. And the Notion, you're going to export the Notion test database ID variable that you got when you extracted the database ID when you created. And then we're going to replace these with the, value, the values that are relevant for your project. Um, now we can access those from inside Jupyter Notebook. So this is what I'm doing here. I'm importing the necessary dependencies for this project. We're going to go through what am I importing here. And then I'm setting three variables, the token variable, which is the notion token that you just exported the database ID that you just created and you got from the uh, from your notion page and the and then URL, that's the URL you're going to use to make updates to that database when you're doing post requests to that Notion page. Finally, you're going to set up your headers so that you can authenticate your requests when you're interacting with the Notion API. And then, uh, yeah, so this is what we're doing here. Uh, we have the token, the database ID, the update the database URL and the headers, which is just a dictionary to set up the authentication for sending the requests to the Notion API. So finally, we're going to write a function to read that database. So this is the function to read the database in Notion. Basically, what we're doing is we have a read URL, which is URL we're going to use to send a post request to the database querying for information. So this is the post request. Then we're going to store that response as a JSON file. We're going to print the status of our request so that we know if it worked or not. And here, honestly, I'm doing something that I actually regret doing, which is just saving that JSON file. I should be just returning the data. But you know, when I did this, I was saving as a JSON file. I don't recommend saving a JSON file locally in your folder because this file is going to have a bunch of information about 
um, pages inside that page and it's gonna have like the IDs for those things. So, you know, it's, it's not the best idea to have this um, saved in your folder, but at the same time for organization, it's, it's useful. Okay, so now that we did this, um, okay, so now that we did this, we're gonna write a function to list all the tasks present in that database. So the function to list all the tasks is gonna be uh, the get tasks from the database and we're going to get the length of our return results. This is going to be the length of our table or the database that we created with our tasks. Then we're going to loop through that. Uh, we're going to loop through that database and we're going to get the tasks from the database, which is what we're doing here. So we're accessing the results. Then we're accessing the properties of the database. Uh, I'm assuming that your database uh, has a column called task, uh, but you could easily change that to whatever you want. You could just replace this as a variable, put it here and you're good to go. Uh, and then I'm printing out the task with the corresponding ID number, with the corresponding index number of that task so that you can access later for checking and unchecking and creating tasks, new tasks. Perfect. So this is what the get tasks function does. It calculates the number of tasks in the database, which basically is just the length of the result of that request. We created an empty list to store. That's not true. That's not happening anymore. <laughs> we loop through each task in the database, checking if it has a title, and then we extract the name of each task and print the index and the name of that task. Uh, now we're going to write a function to check and uncheck the tasks in the to-do list, which is our Notion database. So this is the check task function. We have a new update, an update URL, and basically that update URL is the URL we use from the page corresponding to that database so that we can make changes to the property of that page. In this case, we want to add, we want to change the property of the checkbox. Then we're going to say, um, that the um, property of the checkbox is going to be equal to a check status, which in this case is true, but this function checks and unchecks the task. So, uh, and we're going to change that when we wrap everything into a CLI tool, but right now that's how it looks. And we're going to get the task name. We're going to update the task and dump that into a JSON, uh, a JSON file. And then we're going to send a patch request to the update URL of that page with the headers and the updated task page that now has the checkbox checked. And then we're gonna print task was checked and that's it. So that's what we're doing. We're um, checking the property of the task page and then updating that data, converted to a JSON string and sending that to the Notion API through an HTTP patch request. Uh, and then we print that to the console. Okay, perfect. So now we write a function to add tasks to that database. So this is the function to create a task. It has three uh, arguments. It has the test title, the test database ID, and the headers. So we set up our update database URL. We set up an update page URL, and then we create a dictionary that will contain the contents for our new page. So that's this di uh, dictionary right here. It has to have the name of the column matching the name of the tasks in that in the original database. So in this case, task, and then I give the title, and then inside of it, um, I say text content, and then the, the task title or the task description. This is the argument that holds the contents of your task description. Then I set up the parent uh, dictionary, which is the, uh, this is the original task database. And you're going to understand that in a second. And then we're going to combine these two properties. So we're going to have the data as, so the parent is a parent and then the properties, new page. So basically we have our task list and then inside of it we have the page matching the new task you're creating. And then we create a post request 
to the page URL, which is the page of your test database, and we print the response. So that's pretty much it. And now we're gonna wrap everything to a CLI two, and we're gonna test it out so that you can see this thing working. Uh, the CLI two is, I'm gonna show it in Jupyter Notebook, just a bit more, it's a bit easier to understand. So let's head over there. Um, so this is the Notion CLI. So the Notion CLI is going to contain, so we're importing our dependencies here. In the Utils module, I put the, um, all the functions that we just discussed. So the read database, read page, there's some other functions here that I'm going to discuss in a new uh, video. And we get the git asks from database. We have all those functions here and then we're importing to this uh, to the script. We're setting up our tokens, our test database ID, and the URL to update the database, and the headers dictionary. And now, I'm using the R parse module from Python to create a simple CLI2. I'm adding a few arguments, so get, which is gonna get all the tasks from the um, test database. Um, an argument called check task to check a task when it was done, a uncheck task argument to check, uncheck a task in case, you know, I thought I was done, but then I wasn't. And then uh, a net task argument where I create a task uh, from scratch and I just add it to the database. And then I parse these arguments. I parse these arguments right here. And then I set up my, um, uh, I set up the actions. So if I call the get argument with the name to do's, right now it just has this uh, functionality, but I'll, I'll add something later. Uh, and then I just call the read database function. I read the database and then I print the outputs of the get task from database, which is the function we discussed just now. Uh, so I'm calling the uh, get tasks from database, which is right here. So it is, uh, I'm gonna erase this because I'm not using this list. I'm just gonna look through all the tasks in the database and print that out. Okay, so to showcase what that looks like, let's just do a little demo. Uh, so here on my left, I'm gonna have the command line tool. And on my right, I'm gonna have my Notion page with the task database. So I'm gonna head over to my Notion page. This is the original database with the um, uh, with the tasks that I was uh, that I was creating. And now we're gonna say, okay, uh, I'm gonna run Notion by CLI. I'm gonna say get, and I'm gonna say to do's. And as you can see here on the left, from zero to eight, I have eight tasks from. Uh, bottom to top here on the Notion database with my tasks. So run code server, uh, added the uh, YouTube, some random tasks that I put here. And it works super well and it works super fast, which is great. Um, okay, so now for the second argument, the check task argument, I'm setting up the argument so that it takes in an integer and then this integer matches the index of the task. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, in the case of this test database. And then I just say, okay, uh, get a page in the database, and I give the task database ID, which is the database ID for the task list table thing that you're seeing here on the right. And then I say, okay, uh, uncheck that task or a check, sorry, check that task or uncheck it. Uh, and what does that look like in practice? Well, I can say Python version CLI and then I can say check task and then let's say I'm gonna check the uh, run code server as a background service because I already did that. So I'm gonna say zero and I'm gonna run. And as you can see in real time <laughs> or whatever, it just checked the task and now let's say uncheck the task, which is the other argument. I say uncheck the task and it just unchecked the task like you're seeing here. So, you know, it's fun to play with APIs.
And finally, let's look at the at desk argument. So I can say Python Notion CLI, and then I say add a task, and I just give a description for that task. So finish YouTube video about the Python Notion API integration. Oh, integration. I can say that, I can run this, and now, as you can see here on my right, the function, the task was added to my database. And that's pretty much it. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next time. Cheers.